Hi everyone, my name is Natalie and today I'm going to do a super exciting video for me. So as many of you know who have been watching this channel for a while, I've been doing a year-long non-fiction reading challenge this year. I started thinking about it towards the end of last year that I wanted to do something fun like a non-fiction bingo and then it sort of grew and grew into until it became sort of a year-long non-fiction reading challenge and I didn't actually end up using the bingo chart that I had initially planned and I was also planning to do it just for myself. I noticed that I got quite a few uh, people responding to it and being interested in it, so I sort of um, decided to uh, extend the invitation to anyone else who wanted to join in. As the year has progressed, I really wanted to make this more of a community thing that um, I, I didn't want it to be so based around myself, but just sort of be an official reading challenge on booktube that it's something that doesn't really exist. I, I have never seen anything like it anyway. And the idea of it is quite similar to the Book Riot's Read Hearted Challenge in that um, I've been trying to sort of uh, put a little uh, little challenges or prompts to, uh, to inspire a further exploration of nonfiction. So this video is basically me uh, announcing the nonfiction reading challenge for next year. And I have decided to call it Curious Adventures. I wanted the name of the challenge to better, um, to be more fun than just a non-fiction reading challenge and um, to sort of capture what I wanted the challenge to be. Um, and so I think an adventure is kind of what I wanted to be, to explore new um, boundaries within nonfiction and curiosity to be the driving force of it. Uh, so yeah, so the challenge for the nonfiction reading challenge next year is going to be called Curious Adventure and that is also the hashtag that I will be using. So if you would like to join me uh, through this year-long adventure, then please use the hashtag so I can follow you. Um, especially, I will be active on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, I'm not on Twitter, but if you would like to, definitely choose, uh, definitely uh, feel free to use the hashtag there as well. I uh, did a Goodreads group last year and I've uh, come to the conclusion that I'm too bad with keeping up with Goodreads groups uh, so I'm not going to be making one this year. So I've said what it's called and uh, the intention behind it um, and um, where to join in basically just use the hashtag wherever you are joining in um, but as I said I will mostly be active on uh, YouTube and Instagram and my Instagram account is always linked below. So. Let's get on into the actual challenges. This year I tried to embrace the adventure aspect of it more, so these are often uh, requiring you to actually do more work than read the book. Uh, I hope that that is going to be more of a fun challenge and that it will be quite open in terms of your tastes in terms of nonfiction, but that it will sort of force you into trying out new things along the way. So I will get to that when I get to the challenges. Uh, I think I will also write a blog post for this to have it all summed up in a writing form. Uh, so when I've done that, I will definitely link it below. I decided to keep it to 12 challenges this year. To have one a month, it feels very doable and, um, and manageable. You can always do more if you would like to, like do doubles of things, but I wanted to have it more manageable than last year when I uh, did uh, this year when I did 16. Uh, so yeah, the first challenge is read about a local celebrity slash specialty. So uh, some examples of this for me, for example, would be like read about ABBA. That could be something like a specialty for my local area in terms of Sweden. Uh, you can decide what kind of local specialty or celebrity you want to explore and what kind of uh, locale um, like boundaries you would like to explore. So you could explore something that is very local in terms of yeah, like your neighborhood, be a city, it could be uh, an area with it within the country or just the country as a whole. It kind of depends on what you're interested in. Um, but just read something about your local history um, and culture. Um, that is the idea of this challenge. The second challenge is read about an experience different from your own. So I made a few examples like read from a different religion, read from a different sexuality, um, from another race or gender or even specific experiences like living with a chronic illness, uh, having a specific job, like anything that feels like a different experience than your own fits within this challenge and it kind of it's up to you how different 
different you want it to be and how much of that difference you want to include. The third challenge is celebrate something you love by learning more about it. It could be a hobby or something that uh, you've always loved, a place that you love to visit, anything really that you really want, that you have uh, already an interest in and that you want to explore further. It could be something like the 1920s, the punk movement or um, a specific brand like Chanel, like anything really that you are interested in, dig deeper into that topic. The fourth uh, challenge is a collection of short writings that have previously been published elsewhere. So this is most easily done through an essay collection, I think, but also could be things like memoirs or anthologies. Um, the other version of this challenge challenge would be to read a book and then read an article by the author uh, sort of talking about the same topic. So I know that a lot of authors have either first written a, a, like a journal article uh, about something they're interested in and then, writing, uh, then write a book about that topic or the op opposite direction that they write the journal article after in sort of connection with the publishing of that book. So this uh, challenge is sort of aimed to um, to cross over with um, with news articles and with magazines and things like that uh, to uh, to sort of make the point that nonfiction comes in various forms and it doesn't just come in published books. The fifth challenge is read a book about an activity slash craft and then go try do that thing. So basically this is aimed at trying to get you to actively participate with the thing that um, you are reading about. And I've talked about this in terms of um, a video I did about reading deeply and that, that is sort of the idea of this. that connecting the real world with what you are reading. So it could be something like a craft that you read about knitting or sewing, you read about walking and then you take a walk in your local area. It could be that you read about uh, some history, historical event and then go to a history museum near you. Uh, anything really that relates to from the book to a real experience in one way or another. Um, to get you to go out there and experience the, the topic or the thing that you're reading about in a different way. The sixth challenge is browse randomly in a nonfiction shelf of your choice and choose a book you've, ni you've either never heard of or something that grabs your attention. So this could be a nonfiction shelf of your own, the books that you own, uh, it could be a local library, it could be a bookstore, but it could also be something like a friend's uh, bookshelves. Just basically let serendipitous browsing lead you on to your next nonfiction book based on your like interest in the moment. Seventh challenge is time travel. If you could live in any era, what would it be? Read a book about some aspect of it. So if you are interested in the Victorian era and would like to try to time travel, you might not necessarily want to live in it permanently, but just to visit for a little while then you can read something either in a tour, sort of general sense about the Victorian era or just about a person living in the Victorian era. Uh, it could be a, a specific aspect like uh, child rearing in the Victorian era. Anything that allows you to time travel to the era of your choice. Anything uh, that sort of connects you to a specific time period. The eighth challenge is pick up a nonfiction and a fiction pair on any topic or theme uh, and read them together. It's pretty straightforward. I think a fiction and nonfiction uh, often go really well together and add something to both experiences. Um, and if you need some tips on books that you could pick up, I will link Olive's from Book Olive's uh, uh, videos that she's made on nonfiction and fiction pairings that really uh, would work perfectly together. The ninth challenge is dig deeper into your past. Pick up a book somehow related to your childhood slash growing up. So it could be like a TV show that you watched as a child or uh, an idol you had, um, a like a game you played or a sport that you did um, as a child, anything that relates to your early years, um, read something about that. Um, something that makes you feel nostalgic is the idea, the heart of this challenge. The tenth challenge is very straightforward again, it is read a graphic nonfiction. So again, it could be a graphic biography, it could be a graphic memoir, uh, it could just be a graphic history. I've done uh, a one video talking about illustrated nonfiction recently that I will link below. Keep in mind that you can even like use a picture book for this. Uh, it doesn't need to be 
like a, a hefty graphic memoir or a biography it could easily just be a picture book about science for example um, that uh, works equally well for this challenge and the idea is anything that is somehow illustrated or uh, using graphics to tell a nonfiction story. The 11th challenge is explore a new to you press of nonfiction. So basically any publisher that you uh, either haven't heard of or that you have always wanted to try. It could even be a publisher that you've seen around and maybe you've read something by but you can't remember if you've read anything by them. Uh, just sort of explore and the idea of this this is especially to encourage you to pick up indie presses, but it isn't at all like a requirement. Uh, I think it, it very easily lends itself to it. So try out a new um, publisher through this challenge is the idea of it. But as I said, it could be some some publisher that you don't um, that you don't think that you've read anything by or that you haven't read much by. And then the twelfth and last challenge of the curious adventure is adventures help us learn about the world but equally to learn about ourselves. Pick up a book that reminds you of yourself slash allows you to self-reflect. So I mean with all of these challenges the idea is that they are so open that you can interpret them however you want and that is what I'm hoping to inspire in these. Um, but this one some uh, ways that you can interpret it is uh, like a self-help book that would be a more direct way of uh, self-reflecting. Uh, it could be a memoir or essays about topics that are close to your heart or your own experiences, but it could also be um, memoirs or uh, essays are, that are, are about people also doing self-reflection, so it sort of um, allows you to do the same, follow suit. It could be also something like reading a book about a challenging perspective on a thing, like uh, reading from um, an opposite a point of view to challenge you to think uh, in a different way about an issue. Also another way to interpret this challenge would be to read something like a psychology book or a neuroscience book um, that would also be sort of learning about yourself as a human. Those are all of the 12 challenges for Curious Adventure 2020. Uh, I really hope that some of you will be interested in joining me next year in exploring some new boundaries within nonfiction and to just have fun with it. I really wanted to embrace the fun aspect um, and allow you to dig a little. I, I think um, last year the intention was more specific um, but this year because I wanted to invite people I also wanted to keep it fairly open so that you can uh, bend it however you want really uh, but also give you enough uh, to force you a little bit outside your comfort zone. Uh, so I hope that that sounds like fun. Um, as I said if you want to join me then just use the hashtag Curious Adventure and I will be able to follow along your adventures. That was all I wanted to say today. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.